Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Human Behavior Podcast. This week, we are unpacking the mysterious forces of instinct and intuition and explaining how these twin navigators steer our survival strategies as well as our everyday choices. During the episode, we reveal how primal behaviors and nuanced judgments not only coexist, but often compete for the driver's seat in high-stakes scenarios. In order to explain how this complex interaction between instinct and intuition, we share some compelling stories of heroism and survival that highlight the variability of human reactions under extreme stress. From the courage of soldiers to the quick thinking of emergency responders, we illustrate how training and intuition intertwine, impacting decisions that can mean the difference between life and death. Get ready to explore the profound interplay of the instinctual and the intellectual within us all. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the episode and please check out our Patreon channel where we have a lot more content as well as subscriber only episodes of the show. If you enjoy the podcast, I would kindly ask that you leave us a review and more importantly, please share it with a friend. Thank you for your time, and don't forget that training changes behavior. All right, Greg, we're recording, so we are going to go ahead and jump into things today. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, Just a reminder for for those folks who haven't heard before, we do have the Patreon site that you can check out even more, and we have subscriber-only episodes. But today, we are talking about um, instincts and intuition, Um, sort of there's a difference between those and how they affect us when it comes to decision making and it comes to perception and it comes to a whole bunch of other things. But, uh, you know, it's kind of spurred by a couple different conversations that we've had before in the past or different social media posts and, you know, where people are trying to take some sort of uh, understanding of of either instincts or intuition or something about that's unique to the to the human condition and maybe maybe using it incorrectly um not really their intent sometimes or but but you know it's it it turns into one of those um what was it from um uh, uh the anchor man where he's you know 60 percent of the time it works every time you know kind of <laughs> kind of stats where, where people look at stuff but um but I'll, i'm gonna Great throw point. you in a second greg but but i do uh want to kind of define you know intuition versus instinct because we see these these things kind of or the, excuse me we see these terms used uh, quite a bit and interchangeably sometimes even though they they mean something different and uh it's important to understand this and we're going to get to the so what of that uh in, in a little bit but but it, i just want everyone to kind of be clear that you know intuition and instinct may seem like the same concept but but they vary they're very different in, in a number of important ways and so an instinct is, is is something primal it's an innate behavioral tendency shaped by evolution to promote survival and reproductive success mostly in the present moment so mostly like right now right our instinctive behaviors are triggered in response to some sort of environmental stimuli and they're the oldest psychological mechanisms controlled by the most ancient parts of our brain. So, you know, you're, you're talking instinct is, you know, your fight or flight, your breathing, uh, uh, flinching, you know, certain atomic actions, right? Like, uh, oh, that's hot. And I drop the pan, right? Th- those are instinctual uh, behaviors. Uh, you know, another good one, you take a bite of some food that's like, you know, rotten or something like that. You, you instinctively spit it out. You know, you're, you're before you even really have a, a conscious thought of it, you're, you're spitting that out. So, that's the idea is, is something that involves instincts is does not require any sort of thinking, right? They're basically just automatic behaviors designed, I would say, promoting survival and reproductive success, right? There's a, that's yep. a basically about it. But now intuition is that, so when you get that feeling of like, oh, I know something, right? Without thinking about it, man, I knew something was up, right? So you have an intuition about something, it's a judgment or evaluation, and you can't really pinpoint how you came to the ju- judgment it just it feels right like i felt like this is what's going on so those intuitions seem like they sort of just pop out of the blue but it's really a result of of a whole bunch of thought processes that are too quick for your conscious mind to note and that intuition is basically a shortcut right in a sense it sort of helps us make quick decisions based on very minimal information and it relies heavily on experience, right? It's it's the ability to sort of what we do, right? Detect patterns quickly and and without having to think about it, right? Where we teach people how to do that so that they become better at it and then they can do it, right? You know, uh, without thinking about it. But that's what intuition is really when you get into like high level subject matter expertise and they can just make a decision 
uh, quickly without even really being able to articulate why they made that decision. But it's based on a whole bunch of different factors. And that's where, you know, people get that, oh, I kind of had this this gut feeling or, you know, something, something didn't seem right. Or I noticed this about that. So, um, that's where, you know, there were this person, I didn't like their vibes, man, you know, whatever it is, that's right. some sort of intuition. But now we talk about that and how that can go wrong and we can get corrupt file folders. And, you know, I'm, I'm relying on something, maybe something from my past that wasn't right or wasn't typical. And now I'm basing everything off of that. But I just wanted to hit those up for, for the, the sort of definition of those two different terms. Terms so that we can talk about it, Greg. And I'm sure you have you have other stuff to add to that before we go on. So I'll, I'll God, I hope so. Or, or uh, I, I don't know why I would be here if I didn't. Eh? But <laughs> uh, yeah. So what Brian did is he defined instincts, and we're born with biologically determined innate patterns of behavior that are designed to help us survive. Those we we name instincts. So the the difference in my mind between instinct and intuition is is uh, that instincts are primitive. Uh, for example, we have the primitive instinct to survive, the primitive instinct to carry on a species, where primitive means uh, something from an early stage in evolutionary development that uh, we can point to. Now, I would say evolutionary and historical development because there was primitive means of doing something, a tool that we adapted over time. And then we conflate certain terms. So some some people say primal or primordial. Uh, uh, that's all primitive. That all is from earliest stages, uh, uh, the primal, the primitive instincts of humans, for example, are to hunt and gather. Now we've evolved, right? But we never lose those factors. We might lose the vestigial tail, but we never lose the part of our spine that used to be that tail. You see what I'm saying? And and so the tail is gone, but we can point to that and say, this is where our tail well, was. And, well, and, and Go ahead. And, and you're no, and you're talking about you know the those changes, the, the, these changes you're talking about yes. are over you know hundreds of thousands, millions of years, millions of not, years, not yeah. millions really. What if you're talking about a, a, a tail, right? Yeah. But but no, and, and so it's a, I just want to note that. Sorry, yeah, and, and the the reason I'm talking about it is historic development is something we always have to go back to, sociological, psychological, physiological, and then we always talk, what's the historical perspective of this? What did this do? Why is it memorable? Or why isn't it memorable? Why was it forgotten? And we've all heard of uh, the term survival of the fittest. And that means our survival instincts are typified by self-preservation. Survival instinct, therefore, the ability to know what to do, when to do it in order to stay alive. So uh, Brian and I had a brief discussion, a hallway uh, discussion about the survival of the fittest. And, and Brian rightly yeah. said, most people get that wrong. And, and Brian, you're right. When, when right. they hear the term yeah, fittest, no, it, it, right? They, they, yeah, they think like, oh, the strongest will survive or the strong. And, and, and what it really means is the, the most adaptable in that environment. Exactly. So yes, the, maybe being it, the actual physical biggest and strongest will help. But right. but it, you you can also be the smartest and most cunning and survive or so you know there's yep. there's different yep. ways that are or different mechanisms that that will occur when when we talk about that but that was a, a, a you know what even what Darwin was getting at it was about this adaptability was really what it was it was it was to change or, or excuse me adapt over time based on the conditions of that you're put into based on the other environmental things based on whatever's happening in yeah. that area that you can adapt and continue to survive but it's always one tied back to survival and then you know it's 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 the just the adaptation part of it but you know the, and, and that's an, an, an important distinction and you know the the reason why the, I want to just make sure we're clear sort of right up front at the beginning yeah. the reason why we're talking about that is that part, those, those instincts, anything primal, anything, what we would call, you know, the term hardwired in a sense in yep. our DNA is something that we cannot change. It's still there. Even though society is, is the way it is today, we still have all of those things. Like you said, we're still wired in a sense to go out and hunt and gather and continue to procreate the species for survival. And we, in our lifetimes, will not evolve past that. <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe exactly. a million years from now or half a million years, things will change. Um, but but the idea is we're, we're still that way. And so anything primal, right, that you're getting at, anything in there will 
will sort of always take precedent, especially in certain situations, right? It, it's yes. always going to be there and it will always win, right? When people talk about like- it, It'll know, fight until it, kinda, it wins. I agree. It, it, it's Well, it's kind of like the discussion between like nature versus nurture. And it's like, well, look- it, it, I, yes, there's all these things that influence who you are as a person and your behavior and your decisions and all of those things. But but that that what what's encoded in you, those pr primal instincts, right, are are the most powerful. And and yeah. now it's depending on how and why they're expressed. But but you, what you're getting into is is that's that's going to win. <laughs> right. Yeah. I have and, and, to. It, it will but, always but we need to know why that's point. important. You're, you're, you're yeah. right. And on. So, so I want to go why. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. sorry. Uh, I no, no, you're spot on. So I, I think instincts fall to the bottom on the cutting room floor. Uh, 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 when we start thinking that intuition is powerful, that's wrong. We have to switch those things. Humans at birth have the natural instinct to survive. So medically, there's a term fail to thrive for kids for kids that are too short, for kids that don't weigh enough, for kids that don't have that natural instinct to survive. But none of that has anything to do with intuition. Intuition is a cue. It's, it's a, a prompt. It's something that later in life, as you uh, uh, experience things more, you'll start saying, wow, this feels like an earlier experience. Well, when I can compare things, that's not instinct because our instinct is a hardwired decision. And I'll give you an example of that. Okay. Uh, uh, training changes behavior. Our tagline has been forever. And we really, really understand and mean it. What do I mean? So let's flip the coin and go, how can we tell if we're doing training wrong? Well, I'll give you an example. You give a person an aluminum flashlight because it's a defensive impact tool. That means an aluminum tube on the flashlight can stop uh, somebody swinging an aluminum bat or uh, a piece of rebar at you and hurting you by using it in a defensive manner to block. That's what it's intent for. Now, if you use it to strike, you strike certain parts, nerve motor points on the body rather than a knee or an elbow or a head. But what happens to every single person that's handed a club and they're in a fight for their life? They do the overhand swing. They go what we used to call on the street head hunting. And I've done thousands of those investigations. And those people were trained. They were trained to do the common peroneal strike. They were trained to do a different manner of thing. But when you hold those two things next to each other and you see the instinct, the instinct is to survive, which means you will do anything that your brain tells you is within the realm of the yeah. possible to survive. And that's where the overhand chop comes from. Give you another one. You run up on a car. Uh, you're pulling on the door handle. The person's locked. He's trying to put it in gear. The very first thing you have in your weapon, uh, your hand is your weapon, and you're you're holding your your police issued sidearm at the person, saying "Open the door," and they don't, and you start banging it against the glass. Thousands and thousands of films that you can look up. People doing that now. Brian, where is the overhand chop with a aluminum flashlight taught? Nowhere. Where is bashing your firearm against the window to get inside that car taught? Nowhere. So how could we come up with it on our own? It's impossible that of yes. all the choices that are out there that we would choose to do that. It just happened to, to, to go that way. No. What happens is our instinct drives our reproduction. Our instinct says we have to be alive to reproduce. And this is one of those moments where we're going to cut out the middleman and we're going to go straight to the source. And that means that we're going to do whatever it takes in that moment. And that's where our training falls short because those aren't physical skills, Brian. Those are mental skills. No. This is where Maslow got no. it right. We can change certain instinctual behavior with training. Well, you, and and this is sort of the like the situations you just gave examples on are predicated on what I've now gone past the point of being yep. able to really understand the environment and the situations. So therefore, my brain instinctively and will always go primal. It doesn't go, you know what? Everything's probably going to be okay, right? Never if does. if if our brain went to that, one the human of race probably wouldn't have survived this long. Uh, two, th there would be no such thing as as like 
anxiety, right? If people talk about anxiety and it's like, well, the, yep. yeah, that you're, you're good. Like you, you're primed to stay alive. Like that's where that comes from. Yep. Right. Anx- anxiety is that fear of the unknown in the future. Right. Whereas fear is sort of like right here now in the present anxiety is like, well, what's going to happen? Do we have enough food to make it through winter? You know what I mean? That, that, that's, that's an innate instinct in human yes. beings. So anxiety is something it, I don't look at it as, oh man, I got to figure out my anxiety. It's like, well, okay. Why is it being triggered for this situation is what you need to, to figure out. That That's the corrupt file folder. But but having right. it is the best thing ever because it's a, that's what allows you to continue to do your job well and be a good human and contribute to society and stay alive. Yep. But but what you what you what I just want to be clear is kind of you you brought up a couple of situations there to use as, ex, as examples of where where you've gone pat there. You're not using intuition. You're not using anything. You've gone primal at that point because you've you've the, the cycle psychological arousal right has gotten to the point where your brain is relying on instinct and once you do that it's probably going it's it's you you said it it's you're in a fight for your life even if you're not even if the situation according to your brain you are light of day after 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 the fact is going well that's not what was going on you know it was an accident this old man was getting a cane out of the bed of his pickup truck not a shotgun to shoot you but you saw a shotgun or a rifle close because enough. you 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 went close enough and your brain went from intuitive processes and in, in thinking to this very instinctual way of looking at it and then it becomes very binary it becomes yeah. it's 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 either a threat or it's not and it's a threat for my life right i am going to die here if i don't kill this person first yeah. or i don't do whatever action my brain has computed right it, it, it's it's all on why you see people like you know run out and you know try to grab a vehicle or jump in front of a vehicle when someone's fleeing it's like no yep. no, no, no. That, that's everything in the world would tell you that's the dumbest thing in the face of the earth but instinctually at that time your, your brain is so primitive it doesn't understand that this car is going to kill you if you go in front of it it, it, it yep. can't right it can't see that and if i haven't trained for that sort of event right i'm, I'm not going to and, and i become overwhelmed and my decision making has become so clouded that i'm just thinking with instinct and that's never and, th- and this is why we hit this this the the neuroscience and the limbic system so powerfully and why we hit the limitations of cognitive performance over and over and over again because it's something yep. you cannot increase it's something you can't change you can you can become a better intuitive thinker and you can get better at thinking critically so that you do not become uh, psychologically overwhelmed, right? You don't become, you don't reach that, that level of, of instinct kicks in and it's primal, right? You can get better there, but it doesn't matter who you are, what level of training or experience you have. If you do get to that point, it's going to become a very simple, either kill them or, or they're going to kill, or I'm going to die. Right. Yep. And, and it's, it becomes very binary. So this, this instinct is, is obviously to keep you alive. And, and you can, you, you, there's nothing you can do to prevent those. You, there's nothing you can do, um, basically to control those mechanisms once they've kicked in. Right. That's that, that, that's that, is that a like way to, rage. right. Yeah. Right. That, yeah, that, that's the so, idea between anger and rage. Like once I get yeah. to that point, it, it, it's, it's on board, it's there, it's happening and I can't do anything about it. I can do right. everything before it gets to that. I can yep. focus on that, but not once it gets to that level. Does that kind of make it, sense? It, it makes a lot of that? sense. And you said a lot of great stuff. So let's unpack it. First of all, there's certain types of survival engineering that we have. For example, the nose being above the mouth, that's not accidental. The nose makes sure that it passes the smell test before it gets into the mouth. So you're not going to accidentally eat fetid food which would inhibit your ability to survive. You may die from that. So absolutely everything, the ears being panoramic, our eyes being forward looking. If we go down through all of those things, Brian, that's survival engineering, none of it's accidental, okay? Second part of that, uh, uh, we have risk reward circuitry, which by itself means that we were trying to get up and get out of the cave. So you said arousal. Arousal is a huge word, folks. Seeking arousal outside our cave as early man and woman. Fear, anger, anxiety, pleasure, all instincts. None of them are intuition. All of them are hardwired instinct. Now, much later, okay, you can say that, hey, I found that most fish are found in a stream, not on land. Okay, 
well, there's your intuition kicking in. You see what I'm trying to say? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. One, <laughs> one is very much more important than others. So look, uh, 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 there's certain stuff we cannot override. Uh, for example, if we take a look at all of the world, hibernation in animals is an instinct. It can't be overridden. And when an animal does fight hibernation, it ends up starving or dying or being killed by, by other predators. Migration, okay? You don't migrate, you freeze in place and you die. So those are the type of things that we see repeated over and over. I'll give you an example on I-70 outside of uh, small city Eagle in Colorado. Uh, there's corridors uh, uh, where the animals have gone uh, south to north uh, for better uh, feeding grounds for so many years that they had to put up fences with gates and underpasses to the, uh, allow the elk population to continue right. to migrate or they would all die in the freeway. There's a place up uh, in northern Colorado called the Leather they, Highway that, that so many car they, yeah, animal so they, they're, they're, They've done that. They've, they've done even uh, uh, in other places, they've built uh, highway overpasses that are just for animals. Right, exactly. Yeah, they so, they so, built it between two areas because they know they're going to cross, and now the animals learned, oh, we can just go right up over here, and we're not going to cross the freeway. Ex exactly. So we compare that. In humans, it's stuff like eating and drinking and sleeping, and they're examples of our instinctual behavior. And so hardwired are they that when you take a look at circadian rhythms, for example, they're specifically to set up to make sure that we have that brain rest cycle and uh, uh, that we come off. Uh, uh, being on, switched on all day. They're driven by our need to survive. And an example <coughs> of a primal instinct, uh, another one is hunting, okay? Another one is gathering. Those were so essential to early survival, and we still do that today. That's why there's a drive-through at a restaurant, okay? Because we've figured out that how will people get it? Hell, if you can deliver it to their house, They'll even pay extra for it. Look at what's happened even since COVID, which helped us understand that humans are best, uh, uh, that humans uh, that are best adapted to the environment are going to continue to survive. So that failed to thrive in our nature. We have to pass on our characteristics, our biases, our uh, behaviors to future generations for them to have a chance. So those things that are instinctual stick around because they're hardwired and they're hard to break that habit. Those things that are intuition-based are those things that we've learned over time that now all of a sudden, like, like a, a, a female intuition, that's a great one. I rarely use the term intuition, but I often use the term female intuition when I'm describing it. Why? Because females have been predated like horses in the environment. Yeah. You take a look at the, the evolution of a horse, the evolution of a female, and I'm not trying to say anything by that that's negative. Yeah. I'm trying to say that because they were predated, because they were thought of as less person. They didn't get the right to vote, all these other things. They naturally, okay, with their instinct adapted well, and have, intuition they... that I might get raped. I might get, uh, 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 you know, attacked in some way. I might have a problem. So those two things went and, together. And that still go, that, that goes back to the, the adaptation, right? So men are of born course. with, you know, uh, more muscle mass, um, greater bone density, higher levels of strength just across the board on average yes. than, than women are, right? And different yep. hormones that, that allow for that. So so what did women have to do to survive? Well, women have a greater functional field of view than men, right? They can see more exactly. in their environment. Um, they can do this. So that that's, that's the part of the adaptation, instinctual adaptation process where you have to go, well, I have to be able to survive in this world. So as Precisely. a species, this is what happened uh, to me, right? This is what, these are the, these are the, the extra things I have that you don't have, Greg. Greg, you might be bigger and stronger than me, yep. but maybe I'm faster and smarter or something. It doesn't, exactly. doesn't matter what it is. It's, 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 you know, a, a, but what we're, what, you know, you're, you're, kind of getting to on all of this is that onboard system is that is the most powerful thing yes. and those in, instincts will will push and influence our behavior but it's it's towards very specific rewards it is the reward you know it's procreation of the species it's yep. for food it's for survival and then intuitively i like i actually want to go back because I, I like your your fish example it's like okay I found out I'm picture me coming out of the cave, you know, I'm still look, you know, like I, I could, could fit in with that, that tribe uh, today with the, with the beard and hair. That I've got. So but, but the, but the, the idea is That's I find true. out that, wow, I, I went down to the river and I came across this fish and I ate it and it tasted good and I can survive off of this stuff. Well, man, now I've, now I've, I've figured out some way to capture those 
that instinct drove me to to develop these specific intuitive skill sets. So now where I can teach my grandkids the hey, if we come over here on the stream, this is the spot where they all like to tuck and it's easier to ca catch them here than it is yes. over there. So it's not not an instinctive process. It's an intuitive process that I can, and, exactly. and I, I can pass that down. I, I can pass those intuitive experiences down to, down to the next generation, like you said, yep. just like I you know passed down my DNA to the next generation. So so the, the it is, the, that's how they sort of interplay together. And then you you tied it back to sort of, training and how we look at things and those things i i consistently see sort of uh, uh they, they they cross the streams and in ghostbusters you're not supposed to cross the streams right exactly they, they start to well, overlap in, uh, or, star wars or, or, or yeah or, or or people people get it wrong um in, yeah. in a sense so that you, the, the, some of the science behind it is right it's just not being applied uh, uh it's not being applied correctly, which you actually just gave a shout out to Maslow too a couple of minutes yeah. ago, which is something which I never do. do. Right. <laughs> but, but but let's let's go one more uh, uh, layer with your the direction that you're going in because I think that everybody's catching on now. But let's talk about the color red. So you came out and you talked okay. about fishing outside of the cave. So now we come out and we're foraging. Okay, so so we're not hunting. We're, we're foraging uh, in our environment, gathering, they called it back in the day. And we find out that these red berries, I took a mouthful and I immediately started vomiting. So I caught on, okay, because the hardwired system on my body taught my mouth and my esophagus and my stomach that this is not good food. These are poisonous to vomit. Now, it also gave me a couple of very strong instinctual clues because uh, Mukhtar and Ugluk that were hunting with me, they died because they ate too many of the berries and got sick and swelled up. Now, what happens is from seeing that driven by instinct to stay away, I've created an intuition that things that are red are not good to put into my mouth. How long did that last? What was the tomato called? We thought they were poison apples. OK, we take a look at radishes and because they were red and, and when they're hot to the touch, we said, oh, my God, those are poison, too. That's the intuition side of it, Brian. That's what happens when we develop a brain and we start thinking about those things and we put them into a category. But the instinct never changed. The instinct yeah. was continue to sample your environment because well, sooner or later you will find that perfect food that is going to sustain you through the winter. And you, you, that's a, that's an example too of how those um, sort of intuitive processes don't always apply in every situation. So the exactly. instinct, I spit out the red berries because those are poisonous. Now I go, oh man, I can't eat anything that's the color red. It's like, well, yep. yeah, yeah, you can. You just can't eat those things that are red. Um, exactly. You know, and, and you, you know, you you get into to you know smell and all that too. That was what was actually. What I thought the craziest thing about about COVID with were people losing their their sense of smell during it. I mean, if that had imagine if that had happened a few hundred thousand yep. years ago, I mean, maybe a significant portion of wow. the race wouldn't have survived. Or you know uh, I mean? it is, that's because we actually didn't know. exactly yeah. correct, right? Because that's an environmental clue, right? So look, uh, folks, we get environmental clues and internal clues. I'll give you an example of that. An environmental cue: uh, a food source is drying up, the water source is tainted. Uh, I don't have the right amount of berry to animal. Uh, uh, thing, uh, you know, uh, ratio uh, to stay alive. There's too many dangerous animals in this vicinity. Those would all be environmental cues that are screaming at me that would force an instinctual change. You get it? So mm -hmm. the other one, what about an internal signal? Well, that vomiting was an internal signal. What about your biological clock ticking? A female that thinks, hey, listen, I'd love to have a baby before I get too old because, okay, you think that that's something you came up with? No, that's no. something your body and your hormones and your chemicals yeah. are screaming it's, at you to make it an imperative. It, it's not societal pressure. It's, it's exactly. very bio biological. Well, in some um, households, it could uh, contribute, right? That's so true. Right. No, no, no. But well, those are those are contributing factors versus right. yeah, versus. But what, but again, what, what intuition, actual... contributing factor, uh, 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 instinct, actuality. It's the power cable that's running. Like like, think of it this: everybody sees those commercials for Generac. I want to get one of those generators because we live off the grid out here in the middle of nowhere, and we're very highly susceptible, as Brian knows, to our cable going down, our internet going down, all these other things. So what a Generac standby does is it's and it's not a commercial for Generac folks, whatever any generator company. I was to say, are we are we being? Are we getting, <laughs> I'm getting paid for this. Are we being sponsored? Uh, 
So what happens <laughs> is we set use, it outside. Use discount code. Right, right exactly. Goes, uh, Alpha 7. Off. So, and if you call right yeah. now, you get two for the price of one. No, <laughs> but it sets outside your house. And what happens is if you've got energy hardwired into your house, what they do is they create a loop through the generator. So when the generator right. senses the power is no longer coming from that tube, it takes over. So what you've got is the instinct is that power from the line that comes into your house. And and your intuition is that generac generator that says, hey, something's wrong. We have to step in now. So if you modify your training to understand the instinct and you add intuition, Brian, it's as simple as the training that we do with pushing off of that car. It's as simple as telling somebody during that class on firearms, because it doesn't matter where you intervene, as long as you do intervene saying, hey, one day you're going to get in a trick bag and run up alongside of a car. And in addition to wanting to grab that guy and get drugged next to the car, you're going to want to take out your pistol and shoot him. And then you're going to have the, should I stay or should I go and start beating on the windshield with it? These are choices that are instinctual that you're likely to make. So let's work together to overcome them. Do you get how easy it could be if we compare the, 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 the cognitive well, that, a, with the physical, the physical a good one? A good one for that is, you know, look, instinctually you start getting shot at, you're going, you're, you're going to want to dive or, or get behind some sort of cover. Like you're, you're instinctually, your, your brain's going to want to keep you alive and it's going to want to get behind something. Here's the problem. This thing right here doesn't stop bullets. Uh, this thing over here does stop bullets. So you need to look for things like this because that, that, that stops bullets. This one doesn't, you Precisely. know, because instinctually you'll, if I can't see the threat, it can't see me. Well, they can still penetrate it with, yep. <laughs> with, with rounds coming through there. So I, I, that's a, that's a good example of, of that's a of really good kind example. Of, uh, instinct between, uh, and, and intuition in your intuitive thinking and instinctual thinking sort of, uh, together. And I wouldn't even call it instinctual thinking. It's just instinct. It's not thinking, uh, yep. uh the, the, the intu intuition part is thinking, but that's how you can kind of interplay those. And, and that's why, you know, when it comes to setting up, you know, when you're talking about training or, or, or even just developing, you know, with my family coming up with what are some likely things to consider? Well, if I understand better what instinctively, you know, the insurgent, she's 11, has no formal training in a lot of stuff. What is she instinctually going to do when these things happen? Okay. So if I use that as sort of the, the left and right lateral limit, or I use that as the roadway, as the, as the street, where do I want her to go to? What, what do I want to, how do I want to build on top of that? Because you're, you're instinctively going to do these three, these three things maybe in this situation. So what can I teach her in those moments so intuitively she can exactly. make better decisions at that or have a better response? Like, you know, instinctually, you know, she's going to freak out, you know, it, it, or, or be very scared if, you know, the baby starts choking. Okay. Yes. So it, w what can I teach her? All right. Can I show her? Can I make her hold Max and do this? Well, yeah, I did. I was like, this is how you do it. This is how you actually do it. Put your finger in his mouth right now. See how it's tough and he doesn't want it in there. Okay. Well, that's what it's going to feel like in a real situation. All right. So, so having a little taste of that, um, it will help uh, in that situation. All right. But if I don't start with what are you instinctively going to do, I'm sort of I'm already setting her up for failure, right? If I don't take those factors into account when I'm when I'm coming up with that course of action that I want her to do and train her on, then it's going to fall apart in the real event. Yep. I mean, that that that's the thing is that that instinctive primal instinct is going to take over and it's going to override anything that they've taught. And you see that time and time again. Um, yeah. you know, it, it, and so it, that's, that's the biggest issue I see when it comes to how people set these things up. And it's like, we're, we're, we're forgetting this, this primal instinct in us, um, or we're rushing into that saying, this is going to happen, right? You're going to become overwhelmed by events. You're going to have, it's like, well, you don't have to, right. If, if I back right. this up a little bit, but, that but if sense? that's, if that's the only path you're used to following, then that's what's most uh, 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 likely to occur in your prefrontal cortex. Remember, <coughs> we're talking primitive brain <clears throat> versus neocortex, which means that there's always a struggle in your mind. Your mind is always struggling looking at the rest of the world as survival based. So, uh, uh, for example, uh, the people that develop run, uh, 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 run, uh, hide, fight, uh, they got all of those from primitive human uh, uh, instinct. Yep. 
because those are all instinctual. But the science behind putting them in that order, I haven't seen that yet. Okay. And I, I don't know if we can agree with that in all humans. So training to that standard might be the right thing for your agency, as long as the training teaches you options and you understand early when you pull that weapon out and you're about to hit that window, you go, holy crap, that's exactly what we were talking about. Oh man, look, I'm going instinctual. I'm going primitive. If you can pull yourself out of that overhand bat swing, Brian, then you've got a chance. And that's what you were talking about with your daughter. So I'll give you this. Uh, uh, run, hide, fight. I'm not damning you. I'm saying that the science is there. You just got to make sure that the training fits the science, okay? And, and you have to make that choice for yourself because I'm not a, a, a proponent of that. I think you can think your way out of situations and then decide what the options are. Now, uh, uh, and you're saying time. Yeah, I get the temporal element. Uh, 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 the bathroom. Bathroom is the smallest room in your house other than a closet. Your brain doesn't think of a closet as a room because it has linen or pantry, okay? When you go to hide, more people hide in the bathroom than any other place because there's a number of things in the bathroom. There's hard things like the tub that I can jump into. And a lot of firefighters have found kids hiding in the tub uh, uh, and dying yeah. under their bed. Why? Because what happens, that fire overrides all of their training, and all of their intuition, and it goes instinctual. I have to hide from the fire. The fire is bad, and therefore they're in the tub or in the bed, and that's a bad thing, okay? So we have to train them to overcome that. We also have to uh, train them that the fireman that's coming to pull them out from under the bed is going to be dressed like Darth Vader, the actual thing that we tell them that they're going to be scared shitless of. There again, we have environmental cues and internal cues that are going to come and fight between our primitive survival brain and our neocortex. So your training, and again, I don't care what your training is, but your training has to have components of each, and it has to be repetitive enough, and you have to change like a rheostat the amount of external arousal. And external arousal doesn't always have to be fear or anxiety-based. It doesn't always have to be a gun. It can be competing arousal because the brain now, over a million years of evolution or more, now we see survival and what? What do we always equate survival with? Opportunity. Hey, here's an opportunity. Hey, take a look. If I step in there right now, if I do these. So now we have an additional competing factor because it's not as dangerous as it once was. And everybody goes, oh, it's so dangerous now. Look, the survival rate and the age that you lived to, uh, you know, 200 years ago, take a look at that and compare it to today. Uh, uh, you got a splinter and you weren't on the way to the emergency room. You were on the way to the morgue. Those things change how we think about the future. So we have to understand, like, uh, for example, applying the tourniquet. And now people start carrying the tourniquet, but that's not good enough. How do you carry your tourniquet? Is it ready for use? What if you get shot in your gun hand? How are you going to shoot with your offhand? That's the great type of survival uh, thinking that I see that's going on with trainers. But that's not enough. It's not enough to flip the tire or shoot the target. We have to think through these things. And the first part of thinking through those things is anticipation. What might I encounter today? What might I see? When I turn the, the engine in my car and it does the slow wah, wah, wah crank and it's not cold outside, hey, it might be time to check that battery or my starter might be there. Yeah. Brian, we do that when we're talking about our car. We don't do that when we're talking about our kids. So the education, then training then rehearsal for the real event process is critical. And, and you can do that in a number of ways. No, 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 no in-person training will ever uh, uh, stop because virtual training is so good. That'll never happen because humans have to be face-to-face. -face. Maybe in a million years that'll change. But virtual is a great step when you can't afford the other because it costs a lot of money to get actors and ranges and bullets and all that stuff. So you see what I'm talking about. As long as we're moving the dial forward and giving our brain options and seeing what could happen, then our brain gets it from there. We teach the brain how to go, hey, there's Waldo. And it loves that. And now we're back to that reward circuitry that we've already got instinctually that was born with us. Uh, so we, yeah, I know and, that was a even, long even, loop, Brian, but I think you well, even it. Even your, your example of... Um you know, someone running to hide in the bathroom, right? That that's, that's, you know, I'm, instinct is telling me I need to go to a, I, I'm, I'm in fear, right? For my life. I yep. 
instinct takes over and says, I need to find a safe, something that's safe. Well, we're going, well, why would it then go to the bathroom? Because, well, you're, you're in a very vulnerable spot when you're sitting yep. on the toilet and you've done that so many times in your bathroom, in your house that you've now, this is now to your brain, a safe place because yep. no one's ever, yeah. I mean, think about it. It's like even why, uh, uh um, dogs, especially even when they're puppies, if you're, you're, you're yep. potty training them to, it's a very, um, you know, it, it's, it's a very vulnerable time when they're, when they're pooping. So they literally get kind of weirded out and they, they'll look back at their owner and they'll look around and they'll, you know, it's yep. like, uh, cause anyone can come attack them cause they're trying to figure out their, their, their bowels, you know what I'm saying? So exactly. it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a very, it, it becomes, you know, this, this place where you're safe. So therefore when that fear kicks in and I become overwhelmed by the situation and I go to instinct and I'm not thinking through, I will run to those places. That's right. why you see in those emergency situations, people do crazy stuff or something weird or something that's yep. seem it's counter, literally counterintuitive because your thinking brain would never do that. But instinctually, it makes a lot of sense. Oh, now I know why they go there. Uh, you even brought up, we, we talked about it on other podcasts before, but you know, when someone's, um, uh, you know, in, in a, and this is probably more true for a little bit older vehicles, but, but still just as true today in some sense is when someone's being pursued and they're not wearing a seatbelt and they go to take that left hand high speed turn and they almost lose it and That's they almost it. come sliding out of the, the driver's seat. But then when they take a right hand turn, you know, they, they can pin against the door and they're fine and not going anywhere. So now <laughs> instinctively, yep. Their brain goes, got it. Uh, uh, I now know that uh, I have a better chance. I can take a turn at a higher rate of speed going right than I can left. So will it start to choose more right-hand turns? Well, yeah, that's how your brain works. It learns and it learns very quickly. And it's driven by that instinct. So that's that underlying operating system that's always, always on. And the more extreme the situation, right, the more it's going to take over, right? The the, the higher the that's stakes, there for. the higher exactly. the the arousal right the 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 more of a of a survival situation it is the more instinctual you will become and yep. so it's you know it, it it's an important distinction between instinct and intuition and it's important to understand it when like you talked about setting up sort of a training scenario or figuring out what's yep. likely to happen next and this is why we go to the primal stuff when we're doing predictive analysis when the pressure's on with someone they're going, they're, that's, they're going to fall back they're, and they, you know, And that's what people mean when they say, you know, we don't rise to the level of our, you know, expectations. We fall to the level of our training. It's like, well, you, you're, and, and then you're going to fall to the level of your instincts after that. So, yeah. so if you don't have that training, if you don't, or your training was a presumed capability, not an actual capability, all that shit's going to go out the window and you're going to do the most basic rudimentary stuff. And then now what we do, unfortunately, is everyone posts videos of it and points and laughs at people and says, Oh, look at these idiots when, you know, that's you in, in, right. in that situation right so there. Clearly, but. clearly science is that if we videotape or, or tape or, or record, gosh, all of those record. terms are outdated yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But <laughs> think about that for a minute. Okay. Cause there are no tapes or anything, but if we record a situation, and we point to it, immediately what we're saying is we're not going to use the scientific method. We're going to use this one example, and it's going to prove everything to you. That's non-science, okay? That's unscience. Uh, uh, so what do I mean by that? Let's talk again about the intuition versus instinct. All of a sudden, you're on the freeway, and you see a police car pull up behind you. Your immediate intuition your intuitive sense is, holy shit, I'm going to get pulled over. So you go to 10 and 2 with your hands. You start adjusting everything mm -hmm. on your seatbelt, make sure you're looking good. And then the guy burns by you because he's headed for the Waffle House. And you go, whoo, okay. That's all intuition. That has nothing to do with instinct. But that bag of weed or meth or fentanyl that you've got hiding in your car, the fact that you hit it instinctually tells me that you knew possession of that item was wrong. And therefore, you made extra effort to hide it. You know what you didn't hide? You didn't hide your lunchbox. You know what you didn't hide? You didn't hide your hat or your gloves or your umbrella. Those things were all where you could reach them. So you can make an argument for when you go to search that home, SWAT teams, where likely will your suspect be? I guarantee it's not likely the living room. Okay? You can make sure that you understand that intent has been established if the person makes a furtive gesture to hide something. 
Why would they go through the motion on a traffic stop to conceal something from your view unless they had the mens rea, the guilty knowledge that there was something wrong with that? So the same thing when you come in and you ask your kid, how was your day at school? Fine. Okay. You can say, now, Brian, that would be intuition based on all of the other times that your daughter walked in a house. You know something that's wrong. But instinctively, you have to go after that and pull that thread to find out what it is. So there's a constant balance in humans, and survival is at the end of that balance. So therefore, when you see a statistic where somebody just casually throws it out there and says, well, you know, this has to do with uh, your, uh, you know, choosing a bad job or having a bad boss or being in a bad relationship, none of that shit matters to your survival brain. Those are all things that you uh, 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 acquiesce. So you've attributed that. You, you, yeah, yes. yeah. You, you've, you've attributed that, that value to it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, so, so don't think that those things are going to be in the way of your survival. When it comes down to you, you will save you before you save any other member of your family. And that's why it's so remarkable. And we give the congressional medal of honor to a soldier that saw that the situation went sideways and now there's a grenade and put themselves on top of that grenade to solve, uh, save can, everybody else. Because it's not normal, Brian. No, it is you, not clinically you, normal. And and that's that's a that's another point of how you can sort of uh, those those specific cases where you can override your natural instinct through training, yes, um, or through through that. I mean that that's that, but that takes a long time, and it can take you know, um, you, you you're putting in that situation, you're putting you're sacrificing your life, so you're overriding your limbic system in a sense. For the, Which for the is almost unheard of, of something else for something yes, sir. greater, but but it's for but if you think about it, it's not really overriding your instincts because it goes back to survival of the species, yes. right? So you're saying I'm sacrificing myself for the good of the rest of the people in the this tribe. Group. So yeah. that's why you're actually able to do that. Is you can say I can do that because I, this group of people will continue uh, the fight and I will be gone. This but, fight but is worth it. We will survive exactly. Exactly. And, 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 and Brian, so, let me, let me, that, let me ask those you that. Are rare. Those are that's so rare. rare that it's remarkable. And that's why we give awards for it. Brian, you went through the same thing. You, you, uh, 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 that all soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, national guard, coast guard, you went through an induction station. Then you went to basic training. Then you went to advanced individual training. Then you went to even more specialized training. Then you did a workup before you went to combat. Then you went to combat. And then you learned in combat, you came back, you went through a routine again to build up mm -hmm. for the next, okay? So everybody out there that hears my voice, that's a cycle. So as you went through that cycle, you encountered other people that were great stateside. Man, they could throw the grenade. They could do the bayonet drill. They knew all the, you know, the man on the range with the saw. They were just cutting down targets. Did you ever see somebody that was really, really good stateside? But now you're in a combat zone and they had no idea what to do. And you had to grab them by the chin strap and pull them out of danger. Has that ever happened to you? Of course. Of okay. course. Yeah. So and, what, and we, and vice what versa we, as well. Yes, of course it is. Of course it is. You had people that sucked in training that were the hero out on the battle space. Why does that happen? Because we still haven't been able to tap into the difference between our survival instincts and our neocortex. We continue to try to outthink the problem. But we don't understand that even though training is really, really good, the real event will change us dramatically. And in some people, they just won't function well. Some people will grab the, the gun instead of the taser. Some people will hang mm -hmm. onto the steering wheel and it'll kill them. Some people, and you know what, Brian? I hate to say it, but that again is going back to the survival of the fittest. If you make the wrong choice in those circumstances, you may still have heroic mindset in your prefrontal cortex. But I'll tell you that your instinctive brain is screaming at you, let go, run, hide, save up your energy for another day. So we have to, we have to crack the code as humans, and we still have it. Look, we, we've cracked the codes on some stuff. Like OSHA, what a brilliant thing, okay? Because it's likely that you're going to get in an industrial accident if you don't have these safeguards. It's likely you're not going to survive getting hit in the head with a hammer dropped off the roof from the roofer that it slipped out of his belt. Those are brilliant things. What do we got with the uh, National uh, uh, Aerospace, the people that investigate plane accidents, okay? I love the way they do it. What do and they do, the Brian? NTSB. Yeah, NTSB. They go back in and they they take a whole hangar and they recreate everything. They put the belt buckle back where it was. They want to understand everything about it, okay? You know what we haven't done that to? We haven't done that to HR, courts, corrections, prisons. 
those are the places that we need this type of intervention to understand the difference between instinct and intuition and training. And we haven't cracked it. Are we on the way yet? But, but guess what? There's a lot of people dying. There's a lot of people pointing to things that don't matter and saying those things are specifically well, the cause. That, that, that's, that's the issue is we conflate um, some of those. We, we, we conflate the issues. We conflate contributing factors with proximate yes. cause. We, we, we don't fully understand why these things occur. So therefore, you know, without a understanding of what really the problem is or what to address, then you're never going to address it correctly. So we come up with ways that are seemingly good uh, or, or, or certainly well-intentioned, but, but seemingly good things to have. And it, it ends up not working. That's, that's where, you know, you sort of get that presumed capability but in and and that's why we're discussing this instinct versus yes. intuition because you know there's there's certain factors at play and and we because we, we even get into it people are like why do you guys talk about physics sometimes it's like look like if you're you walking not? along a hill or a sloped you know uh, yep. uh ground you're naturally going to start to go downhill and, and even if you're not thinking about it, even if you're just going about focusing on what you're doing, meaning there's certain elements that are at play here that you, you cannot, and if you are not aware of, you're going to attribute your problems to something that, like you just said, doesn't matter or, or is exactly. inconsequential or wouldn't have mattered had you known that. And this is why we're always trying to get people to wind the tape back on a lot of different issues. It's like, well, well hang on. There's a whole world, but, but everyone focuses on whatever that flashpoint was. It would be like... You know, you know, your example of, of the, the plane crash and the NTSB going like, well, it was, you know, pilot error. It's like, yeah. okay, well, what, what was the error? It's not just exactly. pilot error. It's, it's what was it? Because then what they do is they go, well, see, we're training these people incorrectly. They didn't, they made this choice in that manner because they truly believed that was the right thing to do. However, that was the wrong thing to do. But you know what? That's exactly what they were, we trained them to do. So we actually have to go back here when they're yes. first learning to fly and fix that portion of it so that this doesn't happen again. Not fix the plane, not fix the, the be, have it be able to, to, you know, handle higher level G's in a dive. No, no, it's, it's, it's this back here. Those things have to do with physics here's where the human went wrong and that's what we can correct and if we we understand the interplay between these two i think it gets us better at at making at, well at least at seeing and identifying what the potential problems are and and now getting to address them becomes yeah. just as complicated as getting to know what they are because we consistently do that incorrectly sometimes um so it, it, it's it's the these these things playing back and forth. The reason why we we get into the it's not really a semantic argument. It's a, it's an under. It, I have to understand these situations. It's not about well, don't use that word. Use this word because the the problem is those go those arguments are usually on something where it doesn't matter. Where where this one is really important. Like I don't you know it, yeah, it, it's an internal thing. You want to make a name for yourself by people. coining a phrase, right? Come on. Yeah, and 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 a lot of that isn't as important as what people think is is and this is again kind of answering a lot of the questions we get about why we get so heavily into how the brain works and why we keep reiterating certain things about like you know even when it comes to like functional field of view and orientation why certain body language doesn't matter because there's there's other factors at play it's like look if i if i get these parts right everything after that will become much easier and i don't need exactly. to spend as much time on that stuff if i focus on what is instinctually every human being likely to do in this given situation and and so when i keep it vanilla like that and say any person in this situation um it sort of allows me to sort of see it a little bit clearer right instinctually like you even brought up the you know someone getting nervous when they get pulled over it's like well that could be for a number of different reasons man if i'm running late for work yep. and i've been late like three times in the last month and now those reds and blues come on i'm not just thinking about yeah look i've got nothing wrong in the car i was maybe doing a few miles an hour over the speed limit this isn't that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things yep but instinctually that kicks in and now I'm going, I'm going to lose my job or I'm going to be late. I'm going to lose my job. Then I'm going to lose my house yep. and I'm going to lose my family. Then, so now it's a fight for survival at that point. That's yep. where I'm at in my head. It's that instinct is starting to kick in. So those two things influence each other, right? The intuition and the instinct, it's, a, it's sort of a play between the two. Exactly one can right. drive one, one can, one can drive the other. And so it, it, but, but we always like to start with that 
what what's the lowest common denominator the lowest common denominator is always biology you know and physiology yeah. and neuroscience that's it it's 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 your subjective experience in life and your training is 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 ancillary to these mechanisms and these these cognitive processes yep. that are at play and and that's the most important thing to focus on because i think there's the least amount of understanding because we want to attribute our actions to something one, when I get something right, well, I, I, it was, it was because of me, it was my decision I made. <laughs> and if I get something we wrong, all have that well, fragile it, was, ego some, yeah. it was someone else's fault or it yeah. was this, it was the issue or it was raining out. You know what I mean? Like, and, and that's, that's part of the interplay, but that's, that's who we are as human beings, I think. So that, that's kind of like yep. my big, big takeaways and points on this was, was, was just that is that I, I have to know where that sort of line is between instinct and intuition. I have to know yep. how they interplay with one another um, because I think it, it just gives a better understanding of anything that's going on. Any, whatever the situation is, I mean, uh, you know, I've got, I'm dealing with some family stuff right now and, you know, I get all yep. kinds of range of responses from people and what they say and do. And even I, even though I know these situations and have experience, I have to sit there not and your take first a breath rodeo, and not exactly. get pissed. Not, not, not get pissed off when someone says something because they're all right. They're processing it in this way, and this is where they're at in their headspace, and they're thinking about this instinctually, and it's manifesting yep. itself in this manner. They don't really mean it is in the way because I have a, a, a larger sort of you know more experience to to draw from and a better understanding of the situation than some of the people involved so i really know how these things work where they're just yep. sort of instinctively responding to something that's a non-standard observation for them and then so i have to sit there and even though you know i know all of those things it's still horribly frustrating and i get pissed off because i'm going like that's not how this works it's not what this is it's not this but that's instinctually how they are so um i don't know Gray. this is kind of we 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 covered a lot in here. So I want to kind of throw to you for, for sort of last yeah. sort of okay. any, so if you're any a final, trainer, final thoughts. If you're a trainer, if you're a leader, if you're a boss, if you're a coach, a mentor, or a friend, what you need to do is understand how the anxiety can build up in a human. For example, Brian's example of the traffic stop. So if we know that if I go up there, I can de-escalate the situation and de-escalation has been around a long time. I'm not answering this local shit. If I can say, hey, uh, the reason I stopped you, your taillights are out in the back. This will only take a minute. How are you today? I can completely change what's going on in your head from, holy shit, I'm going to be late for work. and all that. There's a million different ways to do that. But when's the last time you rehearsed that with a mentor? When's the last time you as an FTO had a number of people sit in that role and go, what would you say? Can we rehearse that? And that's the same thing about testifying. That's the same thing about knocking on the door and, and uh, asking somebody for permission to do something. HR, that's the same way that you're going to get to the real nut of the issue rather than all the peripherals that are going on. And Brian, we don't train to that. Uh, uh, if we're a chief of police, I should be watching my people from an unmarked car, how they drive during non-stress situations to understand how well they understand their community. Are they running stop signs? Are they going too fast for the speed limit? Are they setting a good example? All of those things, Brian, that's where instinct meets intuition, and that's how we're going to give ourselves a report card. Because if we don't, if we don't modify training to include the cognitive elements, if we don't understand the emotions that go along with the instinctive imperatives that we have, what we're going to do is we're going to sell ourselves short, and we're going to default to putting bullets on a target or coming up with a, a ballistic shield, all those things. Look look at the MRAP, Brian. The MRAP is a huge bank vault. Why? Because that was our answer to, to IEDs, not finding the emplacer or going after the builder. My thing to you is right. science should always lead the way. And humans are simpler to figure out than you think they are. They're much more complex in some yes. ways, right? But if, yes. if we add just an element of rehearsal and training and anticipation to our daily routine on things that matter to people, street contact, traffic stop. Hey, listen, I know your instinct is to flee from me. Don't. I only want to tell you this one thing before we get. There's a million ways that you can de-escalate that situation. And training is the key. Training and education go hand in hand, but training goes further because training continues to put you in situations where you can rehearse those. So when it happens for the first time in real life, you're not scared shitless and you don't 
go back to your instincts and just start clubbing people like baby harp seals. Yeah, I think I think that's uh the the baby baby seals is a good good way. To- <laughs> Everybody's got that image. Come on. <laughs> so so uh, yeah, I, I think you know when that 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 sort of nexus of when instinct meets in, intuition is is um it's it's an it's a it's a complex interplay and i like how you said they're the humans are simpler than we think sometimes even though there are a, a lot of complex factors and they can get crazy but that's that's always say i mean that's what i always tell people about even the podcast it's we talk about the complexity and the simplicity of human behavior i mean because yes. that's that's how it, how it is and so yeah, right. um well, I, you know, if you're still listening at this point, reach out with any other questions. You know, we have the Patreon site as well that that you can, and, and of course, we we appreciate everyone listening and and, and sharing uh, this stuff with your friends. It's how how we grow. And apparently, um, you know, if you go to to get a generator, use discount code Gunnison for an extra ten. Exactly. <laughs> make sure you tell them Greg sent you. <laughs> it's so stupid. Make sure, make sure you tell them Greg sent you. Um, generic, so I do way, that fuck. nowhere. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> That's a good survival instinct, Brian. No, I don't. I don't. Do you, do you know Greg Williams? No. Who? Who? Exactly. <laughs> so, That's not me. Uh, <laughs> I got to do that and, in my uh, own town, right. so I get it. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Hey, you're not one of those uh, people here with Greg, are you? Who's that? Oh, never exactly. mind. Exactly. <laughs> so, Much safer that uh, way, Brian. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, we thank everyone for tuning in and don't forget that training changes behavior. That's all for today, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. We do appreciate it. If you'd like more information or deeper dive on anything that we talked about, you can always sign up at our Patreon site or reach out to us at the human behavior podcast at gmail.com.